Hi, and welcome to lab. I'd like you to be my lab partner today. Today we're going to be doing experiment 17, the solubility product constant of copper iodate. In the first step, we are going to normalize two burettes, one with copper nitrate and the other with DI water. We'll make the solutions that are listed in table one, and then we will measure their absorbance with the spectrometer. Now that our burettes are normalized with the copper nitrate and the DI water, we can prepare the solutions in table one necessary. Now that we've prepared our solutions, we can mix them. And be sure that you dry the stopper off each time before transferring it to a new test tube. And give each of the solutions a mix. Once we've mixed these, we can analyze them with our spectrometer. And since I'm using one test tube, uh, one test tube stopper. This one actually is a little bit small for this stopper. Um, I will let me see if I can get that. I think I can do that. Perfect. Okay, and now that they're all mixed, we can analyze them in our spectrometer. So I'll start with the first solution. And of course that will go to waste. We always want to normalize um, our little cuvette first. And Again, hold it by the top, wipe the sides off, and put it in our spectrometer. And that is negative 0.016. I'll take a clean pipette fill it up that will go to waste again I'm going to wipe off the sides of the cuvette and that is zero point 0.179. Again, a clean pipette for solution number three. And get rid of that. And for solution number three, this is 0 
0.381. Again, a new disposable pipette. And that is 0 0.556. We're on to the fifth solution now. Zero point seven seven three. And for our last solution, Zero point nine four four. Okay, we're going to leave this here for a minute. Um, this will be for our solutions that we are going to do in the back. But right now, you can plot a curve of the line. Um, hopefully, it's a straight line. Um, and uh, please print this out and uh, save it. Now I'm going to drain our three saturated solutions of copper iodate into three test tubes. And each of these will contain 10 milliliters of the saturated solution and 2 milliliters of the ammonia. Now that I've drained these and added two milliliters from a pipette of the ammonia, and I've also mixed them, I can now measure these in the spectrometer. And again, we are going to fill it up with the solution and dump it to waste so that we have a clean cuvette. And the reading for this one is 0 0.095. And this is your saturated solution. Again, I'm using a clean pipette for each one of these. Zero point four two six. And that was the one that had the extra copper in it, and this one has the extra iodate.
0.025. In the next step, we'll be titrating for the iodate concentration. First, I'll dispense 10 milliliters to an Erlenmeyer flask. Okay, and now I'll add the other components. Now that we have our saturated solution of copper iodate in here, I'm going to add about 50 milliliters of DI water just to get the volume to where we can read everything quite well. I'll add one scoop of KI. And two scoops of the sodium citrate, which prevents the precipitation of copper iodide. Now we're going to titrate this with sodium thiosulfate. Sulfate. And my initial burette reading is 0.00. .00. And we're going to titrate, let me move some of these, so you, oh, I also do need to put in one pipette full of sulfuric acid. We're going to titrate till it is a light yellow. And then we're going to add some starch. And in a short while, um, very, very low milliliter reading, it will turn color. You don't want to go all the way to clear. I'm going to stop it for a minute. Give it a good swirl. It's becoming quite a bit lighter now. And there is a yellow color. Now I'm going to add the starch. About 10 drops.
and I'm going to continue this. until it is clear. It should not take a lot. I'm going kind of slow here. And I can read the burette reading. Our first reading was 0, 0.00. And our last reading is 16.70. 0. 16.70. OK, this first one is done. I've drained our second solution, the one spiked with copper nitrate, into our Erlenmeyer flask. I'm just going to add DI water to get the volume up. And again, add one scoop. of potassium iodide and two scoops of sodium citrate. and one pipette full of sulfuric acid. I'm going to make sure most of this is dissolved first. And now to titrate. Our initial burette reading is And now I'll add, again, about 20, 10 drops of the starch indicator. And I will continue the titration until it's clear.
almost clear. It might be a little bit cloudy. It may go back after this, but this is good for right now. Thirty one point one five. Thirty one point one five. And for our last solution the one spiked with the IO3 minus. I've already drained 10 milliliters of that solution into the Erlenmeyer flask. I added some KI. And some sodium citrate, two scoops. And then I'll add some sulfuric acid. Kind of washing any of the salts down. I was kind of low on the burette reading. I filled it up to 0, 0.00 milliliters. And I think I'll add some more water. Again, the amount of water is not terribly important. Just gets everything up to a value that you can really see clearly. This one will take quite a bit more of the thiol sulfate to get to yellow, faint yellow. I'm going drop wise now. Still a bit orange. And there's a good yellow. We'll add our 10 drops of starch. And we will continue to go until it is clear. Almost there. And there we go. Our final burette reading. is 
is 32.95. Now it's time to clean up. This will go on our waste. Our sodium thiosulfate that can go to the drain, water can go to the drain, and anything with copper in it can be added to our waste beaker. And I'll also add this copper nitrate in there. Clean all the burettes, flip them, and leave the stopcock open. And I'll show you how to do that with this one. And again, that will signify a clean burette. And we can rinse the burettes. I've got most of that. All your solutions that were tested in the spectrometer need to be dumped into waste. And then just kind of clean everything up. Be sure the burettes are flipped, the stopcock is open, and everything else is kind of in the center. Thank you for being my lab partner today.